the base effect of this is super easy to do. And then I'll give you some tips to jazz it up a bit. So first you're just gonna need your footage. Um, if you're doing this as a transition, it's, it's good to get some matching cuts basically. Just line some stuff up. Just makes it a little bit easier on the eyes when you transition between the two. So once you've got your edit done, bring it into a new composition. This is this is basically the matte layer. So this is the layer that generates all the information that you use to displace the pixels and make them go all bleh. Best way to do it, just grab a new adjustment layer and then just whack on some effects to it. First thing you should do, add in a mosaic effect. That'll help pixelize it a bit. On top of that, add in find edges and that will really help add in that contrast you need to displace all the different elements. Tint this to black and white because we're going to be working off the luminance. And then to add in a bit of variation in all the displacement, I've added in a fractal noise. Now I've set this to rocky block and I've gone on evolution. I've alt, I've alt clicked the stopwatch that I just did time times 500 and that gave me enough movement that I was happy with. You may want to tweak it for yours. So once that's done, you want to bring in your initial edit and your newly created mat. Um, what I like to do, I just I like to put the mat right at the bottom, just turn it off just for tidiness. And then on your edit composition, add in a displacement mat. And you're going to want to set your layer to look at the mat and the luminance of it. And you don't want it displacing just yet. So set, the, set these two things to zero. Then you're going to want to bring in a slider. This will just adjust the levels of the displacement map basically. So if we go over to the effects on the composition, we can go onto our vertical displacement, use our pinwheel, and whip it onto the slider. And now you can see our slider control our vertical displacement. But this this kind of looks a bit crap, doesn't it? So what you're gonna want to do is duplicate this displacement map, I don't know, like 40 times? So now all the displacement maps are controlled by one slider. So you're not having to tweak all of them individually and that makes it super handy. And now you can see the effect. It looks a lot more like pixel sorting. The more displacement maps you have, the smoother the effect will look. Um, and it, it, it honestly doesn't chug too bad on your PC, surprisingly. Um, but you see here, we're getting these alpha appearing at the tops and bottom. You could fix that by doing wrap pixels around. However, that brings the pixels that go off the top to the bottom and brings them back up. To make the effect sort of neater, bring in Repertile and put it on just before your slider. Set your tiling to unfold and then you can extend down and up as well if you need to, if you're displaced in the other direction. And that way, the pixels at the bottom are stretched down and the pixels are top is stretched up so you don't get that weird top colors warping to the bottom which just looks a bit ugly. So the displacement on its own looks fine but personally I like it when the pixels kind of zoop up into just one color in each column basically. So rather than just displacing it fully I use the scale wipe. So you just scale wipe you select your point because I'm going up I'm starting my thing at the bottom I'm setting my angle to zero so it's going straight up and then I'm just going to stretch it Whoop. and that way it kind of just smooths it out a bit. Then to give like this transition a bit more oomph I like to add in a find edges on top of everything just to give like a bit more depth to all these pixels being stretched out. So I do my find edges on an adjustment layer. I set it to color burn and you see it's super super extreme so Dial it down, dial it down, like real low. I honestly like 10%, maybe, maybe five. And on top of all of that, just add in a little glow. Just add in a little glow. Have a tinker with it, have a play, make it make it work for you. You know, once that's all done, just dial in and out all your transitions on the cut point. Makes it super, super easy. Now, what I really like about this cyberpunk transition effect is a little pixely grid that comes up on top of everything. What you're going to need to do is duplicate your edited footage with all the effects on it, all the displacement stuff. Go ahead and duplicate it twice and then bring it on top of everything. On the bottom one, just delete all these effects. Just delete them and replace them with a little with a little bit of a blur. Repeat edge pixels as well. Of course, of course, always repeat your edge pixels. On your top one, which still has all the effects on it, you're gonna wanna add in a couple more effects. First off, a luma key. We wanna just have the highlights. So we're gonna key out the darker, just turn up the threshold a bit. At this point, you may want to just solo the layer just so you can see what you're working with. I just want the highlights. That, that looks all right. You, now you want to turn this bit into the little grid kind of effect. So go to ball action. Make some big old balls. Turn the ball size down. Let's let's go for 20. See what that looks like. Uh, good ball size, but too sparse. So turn down that spacing. Tinker for the look you want, basically. And then you're gonna want to make them glow a bit. Let's get them glowing. So first we're gonna add in a fill and add in a little bit of a glow. Now what you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna hide your balls layer and on your blurry footage layer, set it to a luma mat. And also set it to add or screen. And you're gonna get all these little pixels showing up looking a bit more exciting. And maybe even turn on the initial layer as well and just dial it down. Have a play. 
make it work for your footage. My final sort of tip for making this feel a bit more dynamic would be to offset some of the displacement. What I've done in this one is I've separated the hands to make them displace at a different rate to the background. The way I did that, I just took my edit again and then right at the bottom, I've added in a key light. This is normally used for, you know, keying out green screens. Instead, I've selected my hands as the key color. And you think, well, that just keys out the hands. We can flip this so it's everything apart from the hands. So when you clip blacks and clip whites, it's basically just swap them over. Clips white to zero and clips black to 100. Twiddle them between each other, try and get them about right. And then you're gonna find your hands have just lost all their color completely. The fill is there, but the color's not. You're gonna want to change from final result to intermediate result. Final result means that whatever color you selected, it's gonna try and produce a saturation with it. You know, that works good for green screen, but not how we're using it. Yeah, so add that into your main composition. Um, I suggest putting it above your scale wipe just so you keep that separation. Otherwise it's all gonna get merged into that one sort of effect. Yeah, um, go have a play.